Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll cover how to get started with the Actarius Excel integration that offers extensive options for analytics and planning with your Actarius database. The first step is to install the add-in and we have two versions, a 32-bit and a 64-bit version. To see what version is relevant for you, just go to File, Account and check the About Excel box um, in your Excel to see which version of Excel you're using. So in my case, it's a 64-bit version. So this means I need the 64-bit add-in. So for that, you just go to the Actaris Modeler, you go to Downloads and to the Excel add-in folder. And there you can download either the 32-bit or the 64-bit Excel version. In my case, it's 64, so I would download this one and install it. Once you've installed it, you will see the add-in in your Excel. And the first step is just to log on with your Ectaris account. So the normal Microsoft or Active Directory account. So you select your account and then you are connected to your Ectaris database with all your relevant read and write access options. So now we are connected. And the first time you connect to an Actaris database, there are a few options. So you can either connect directly to the relational database or you can connect via Power BI. We typically these days recommend to connect via Power BI as this will then give you much better options to maintain your DAX, to potentially also include other sources, to uh, do some transformation that you might need. So Power BI gives you quite a few options, but um, in general, connecting directly to the SQL database, to the Akari SQL database, or connecting to Power BI um, uses the same data source. With Power BI, you get the option to set up your DAX in a simpler way, and you also have a direct query option, which in Excel otherwise is not possible. So um, if you load the data into the Excel data model, which is the other option, so you're connecting the relational data Based to the Excel data model or Power Pivot, as it used to be called. Um, you don't have a direct query option, so this would load the data into the data model in Excel and you can work with this one. Typically, the advantage is that it's much faster because you don't have to go to the server. The disadvantage is if you do planning, this will be a little bit slower because then you have to refresh the data model when you enter data back into Excel. So let's um, do initially the Power BI option. So we can just go to data, get data. And now you see uh, you have an option here, connect to Power BI, we use that one. This will then give you all the data sets that you have access to in Power BI. So you can see I have a long list of options that I can use. So I will use the Ectaris demo, which is one of our standard demos, the demo user here. And now Excel is creating the connection to this Power BI dataset and will give me a pivot table view initially. So here we see now the connected um, tables. We can close this one for the moment. And one thing to keep in mind with um, connecting Excel to a Power BI source, you have to s define explicit measures so that you can use them in the value section. In most of the cases, this is just a simple sum statement where you specify a name and then just use some uh, DAX sum statement and then you put the hectares amount field into the sum, into the sum um, argument. Uh, in some cases this could be a balance or really any DAX statement in Power BI uh, which you can just um, set up and then you will see that in the amount fields in, in Excel. So for example, here now, if we want to use this GL amount, I can just search for it, which is a good practice in any event to work with your data. 
and put this in the values field. Uh, if you don't do this and you try to access the amount field, unfortunately Excel will not allow you to put this into uh, the value area. So this is uh, an issue that um, many new users encounter. So important to set the amount variable as an explicit measure. So for example, with a sum tax argument. And now in the pivot table, we can just add whatever we want. For example, the account name in the rows, the period in the, in the columns. So we typically in the automatically generated dimension, we use a convention for year month that will give you the combination of year and month, which is typically a good good thing to do. So we can see now all the uh, year months combinations here. We can then add, for example, a fiscal year as a filter in, in the pivot table and can then limit this to a particular period, for example, 2019. The other thing that you typically set is the scenario. At the moment, this is a combination of scenarios, which is likely not what you want. So you want to filter on the scenario. Let's put this into our pivot table as well. So now here I can select the scenario. For example, we want to look at budget data. Now we can see our budget data here. And this is all it takes. So the only thing left now, if you want to now enter your budget data, obviously you can define the report as you like, but if you want to enter your budget data now, you can just go to Ectaris, specify you want to allow the write back here. You want to choose the cube to be used here. In our case, this is the uh, GL one. So called finance. And this is it. So now you can immediately start entering the budget data. You obviously have to keep in mind that for the dimensions of the cube that you're not using, this will be a splash. So maybe we uh, add another dimension here to make it a bit less of a splash. So the name for the organization name, for example and filter this to a particular organization. Let's see, we want to do our budget for Australia. And that's it. So now we can immediately start our budgeting with all the Excel features that you have. So let's say for example, I'm planning a marketing collateral here and I want to have this for the first few periods. I can just um, drag this and do my budgeting there. The cool thing is you can also use in a calculation. So you could say, I want to use uh, D13, the one above times 0.12, so plus 20%, um, for example. And then you have uh, the same option here. And once you're finished, you just press commit. And this will send then all your changes back into the Actaris database. So you see now we have now seven changes committed. Now we get the refreshed view. So you see here, this is now because of the precision with the um, with the carry splashing. This looks like um, uh, you know a lot of decimals here, but that's something you can typically address in Power BI. So let's do this quickly and specify for the GL amount that I've done here. I don't want to see any after comma. You could also do just one. And then once you have done this. You just publish it uh, back to Power BI, and then in your report, you will get the correct data. So after refresh, we see now that everything looks okay. Our entries are shown correctly, and um, we also get the right totals. Talking about totals, what is typically useful here is also the option to write back on aggregation. So let's take the account option to enter data on an aggregated level. So let's take here, uh, for example, the account group and drag it into our report. So now we have the account group here as well, but as we can see, the subtotals are not shown or the, the, the group total is not shown. 
that's something you just have to turn on in the pivot table. So I just go to pivot table design, subtotals, and then you can choose either a top or bottom. Let's here choose a top. And now we've got the total showing here um, in the report. And here, just I quickly want to demonstrate now how we can enter values on the total. So if the boss, for example, says the expenses in January will likely be higher. So I can now enter here minus 12,000. And then again, if I uh, write this back, I will see that this was distributed to all the underlying accounts based on the existing distribution. Or you can also do relative increases by using the prefix, for example, I 10% would increase this um, by 10%. So this was just a quick overview of the options in the Actarius Excel add-in. For any questions, please contact our support team or watch some of the other training videos. Hello and welcome. In this video, I would like to quickly explain how to use the Zero Excel Actaris template. The first thing is you have to install the Actaris add-on to write back into the template. But if you just want to read uh, from the Actaris database, you don't need that. This is just for budgeting. To install the template, just check your Excel version. So go to File, Account and About. And this will tell you if it's a 64-bit or a 32-bit Excel version. And then depending on this, you can install the respective version of the Ectaris add-in that you will find in the Ectaris modeler. You go to Downloads and to the Excel add-in folder. And there you can download either the 32-bit or the 64-bit Excel version. In my case, it's 64, so I would download this one and install it. To download the Excel template, just go to download again and to Excel report templates. And here you will see now the templates that are available. We have the two formats. We have the normal zero template. It's based on the zero tables as is, and we have the all up format. The zero format, um, you can just read from the data. With all up, you can do write back. So you can enter the planning, budgeting, forecasting data and you can modify the data model in the OLAP format. So if you want to use these features, you have to download this one. So just click on that, then download it to your machine and open this template. So there's now only one thing to do. You have to configure it for your database. So typically you just click on enable editing so that you can change the settings here. In queries and connections, you will see soon all the zero tables that are used in the template. And the only thing that you need to do here is change a parameter that points to the database. So just uh, look for the database option here. Right click on it. Click on edit. Then you will get the dialog box where you can specify the parameter for the database name. And the only thing to do here is you put in your database name here. Uh, it always starts with AP underscore and the rest is then your name, which um, depends on your database. To check this, you can go to the Actarius Modeler. And you see the name here. So in my case, it would be AP underscore better FPA. In your case, it will be your database name. So that's the only thing that you have to adjust. I will now cancel this because in my case, it's already done. So I can just close this here. Uh, in your case, just click on close and load. Once you have done this, 
you have to log in to your database and you see three options here, Windows, database and Microsoft account. You always with Actarius work with the Microsoft account and you have to log on with your Actarius account from here. So it's not Windows and not database, but make sure it's Microsoft account. So then you click on sign in and you will likely be asked to enter your account details. In my case, I have already the, I've connected already once, so I have it here. But in your case, you will likely re be required to enter your Actarius account name, which is normally your database name at actariesandmicrosoft.com. So you type this in, put in your password, You will see then your data here in the sample reports that we provide for you. So you have a profit and loss um, report. We can close the zero the queries and connection. We won't need them anymore typically. Um, you'll see now the sample reports, profit and loss, balance sheet, sales and date. And on the right side, you can see now all the data fields that Ictaris provides for zero. So accounts, uh, organizations, contacts, and many others. It's typically uh, easy just to type in what you're looking for. So for example, if you're looking for a particular account detail, just type ACC. Now I see all the elements um, that start with ACC. So for example, all the accounts and here, you can already see the accounts dimension. So this is the metadata that contains all the account related information. The fields that are coming from zero, but then also additional ones that you have specified uh, yourself. So for example, for mappings, for consolidation, for other things. So you would see all the fields here, your own and the ones that come by default. And then you can just uh, drag and drop them directly into the report. So for example, if you want to see the account code, I can just drop this here now into my report. And then I have a drill down from, uh, in this case, account type, account name and code. So this works like a normal pivot table, just drag and drop uh, whatever elements you want to use. What we see here now as well is that we here have budget figures and we can also then enter data, but for that you will need the Actaris um, Excel add-in installed just to view the report, uh, you don't need that. So if you want to enter data, just make sure that you have selected the model, for example, um, finance. So on the report, we now also have the option to do our budgeting and planning. Um, in some cases, you have to enable the edit if it's not already set up. So if you click here on enable pivot edit, I can now then write back data. In other cases, you might also want to turn on your subtotal so that you can enter data also on the subtotal level. So if I want to enter on total revenues, um, I need to show the subtotals. To show the subtotals, you just go to the pivot table design or pivot table analyze option. And here you have then the subtotals, for example, show the subtotals at the top of the group. So what I'm doing here. And then you have the option to directly enter your data. So for example, I can now start entering my data here with all the options that you have. So let's say I want to copy this to a few additional months. I can just uh, use copy and paste here. You can also use calculations. For example, if you want to make um, this account a percentage of this one. So this is C15. So I can just type C15 times 0.2. That would mean it's 20% of that number. So once you've added and entered your data, you can just go to Actarius, click on commit changes, and that will automatically write back all your changes to the underlying database. So changes were not committed. Now the report gets refreshed. So here we see now the new result that takes into account the changes that we've made. The interesting thing is now that you can adjust all these changes. So for example, if I want to increase now the total, the total revenue that takes into account all these um, sub accounts, 
I can, for example, now use a relative increase by entering i 10%. This will increase the um, all the underlying accounts after I've pressed commit uh, and adjust them with this 10% increase. Or you can put in a total number. So if I want to now set the total revenues for March to 5,000, you can just enter 5,000. And that would change the underlying values to reach this new target. And yeah, this concludes the introduction to the Zero Excel template. If you have any questions, please uh, contact our support team and feel free to check out our other training videos.